you're not even who you think you are because you're you think your name is Alexis Manigo, but actually it's Kamaya Mobley. Like, phew, talk about an existential crisis. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please do subscribe. And if you're old here, hello again. My name's Kate Philpot, this is Sandy, and I do mainly true crime videos on this channel and the occasional crazy story time. I post updates about my videos and cases I've covered on my Twitter and Instagram, both of which are katephilpot underscore YT. But yeah, let's just hop right into this case. So today's case is the case of Kamaya Mobley, who was only eight hours old when she was abducted from the maternity ward and disappeared from her family's life. Kamaya's mother was Shannara Mobley, and I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about her. So she was a bit of a troublemaker when she was growing up. She referred to it as she was running the streets, like in her early teens. But from the age of nine, she had actually been molested for two entire years. At the age of 14, she became pregnant and she did lose that baby she miscarried. And she kind of just like, she had fun, but she made bad choices and she knew that. And she knew it needed to stop. And that was around the time that she fell pregnant again at the age of 15. So this was different this time. She just took this as her purpose. Like she knew that this was right. She was going to better herself for this baby and everything would be fantastic. If you've ever experienced when things just start falling into place in your life, that's exactly how Shannara felt at this point. So let's fast forward to 11 p.m. on the 9th of July. Shannara was on the phone to one of her friends and her water broke. She actually was supposed to get induced two weeks earlier, but she just wanted things to happen naturally and I think there was an element of fear as well because she was so young and she was now gonna be a mother. Her water broke and it was time to have her baby. And at this point she was 16 years old. So her mother wasn't actually there. She lived a little further away, I think a little bit more south in Florida, I believe. And the baby's father was unfortunately in jail on a drug charge. So Shannara had to go through this on her own essentially. So any of the medical staff that were there, they were the only ones that could offer her any kind of support and company. So after about eight hours of labor, Shannara gave birth to her gorgeous little daughter, Kamaya Mobley, in Jacksonville, Florida. And unfortunately, eight hours later, Kamaya was abducted from the hospital and Shannara wouldn't see her again for 18 years. And I do just want to say that there was a movie made about the Kamaya Mobley story. It's called Stolen by My Mother, The Kamaya Mobley Story. And it was released earlier this year in 2020. So I'll have that link down below. And it's really interesting to just show you the emotions and the ups and downs and how it actually affected these people during this time. Um, but it's not 100% accurate, so I don't really refer to it all that much in this video. Kamaya was wearing a white t-shirt when she was taken and she was wrapped in a white blanket with pink and blue stripes on it. But it almost feels redundant to even give those details because she was only hours old. She was gonna grow out of these things pretty fast. Not to mention her defining physical features would also change. That's part of why I feel like it's so hopeless when a baby is taken from a hospital because they are gonna change they're not gonna remember anything. So it's, you just lose those connections really early on. So into the details of the disappearance. Authorities believed that Kamaya was taken by an African-American woman who was posing as a nurse. This woman befriended Shannara and spoke to her for about five hours in the hospital. And she knew that there was no other family around. So she befriended her and supported her through this overwhelming time. And then when dealing with the hospital staff, she passed herself off as Shannara's family member. This woman paced the halls of the hospital for 14 hours before taking Kamaya. She was constantly asking, has Shannara had her baby yet? Has Shannara had her baby yet? Is Shannara gonna be with the baby? Is the baby in the nursery? Like asking too many questions and some of the staff were like, that's a little weird, <laughs> but they didn't really think too much of it. But yeah, from about 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., this woman was in and out of Shannara's room periodically and chatting with her and getting to know her. So at around 3 p.m., Shannara was starting to doze off and this suspect informed Shannara that there was something wrong with the baby's temperature so that she was gonna take her and do some tests on her and that she'd be back in about 15 to 20 minutes. And actually on the way out of Shannara's room, she brushed past Kamaya's grandmother. 
and she was kind of rushing out and she told the grandmother, I'll be right back. But of course, she would never come back. And the grandmother found it kind of strange that this nurse left with a handbag as well. She had a bag over her shoulder. But of course, by saying, I'll be back in about 20 minutes, that is a long enough time so that you might not realize it might be 22, 23, 24 minutes. And then you go and check it out. By the time any alarm was raised, it would be too late. And this woman would be miles away with Shannara's baby. So when Shannara called down to the nursery, she was like, is my baby here? <laughs> the nurse took her down a couple of minutes ago, about 20 minutes ago. And they were like, no, nobody took Kamaya down. And then it hit her that something was very, very wrong. Now, I've never been pregnant, but I do have a fascination with it because it is such an incredible thing. And you go through so much as a pregnant woman. You got the nausea, the fatigue, the mood swings, the food aversions. Then emotionally, you have the shock of finding out and then you've panic and worry and excitement and there's so much going on and you deal with all of that knowing that at the end of it, no matter how hard it gets, at the end of it, you are going to have this beautiful miracle that is your baby. So to experience all of that and eight hours after obviously the very grueling process of labor and delivery, your innocent little baby is taken from you with no explanation or clues left behind. I can't even fathom how that must have felt. It is really hurting me inside. I cannot sit and hold her. Will you please, please bring me back my child? And of course, after this, Shannara started having a lot of nightmares about this woman. She started self-medicating and she just didn't even want to live anymore. So a little bit more about this abductor. She was said to be between 25 and 47 years old, which is a very big age range, but however. She was wearing a black mushroom style wig that kind of, you know, curled here. She had reading glasses on, a nurse's flower print jacket, teal medical trousers, black shoes, and surgical gloves. And she was carrying a large black vinyl or leather bag. She also had an identification tag, but it was facing the wrong way around. And authorities believe that this suspect had some kind of knowledge of the building and also was familiar with medical terminology and stuff. But even though we knew these details, she was incredibly difficult to find. They searched high and low, they knocked on doors, they put out ads, they did everything they could, but there was really no sign of this woman. And in theory, it should have been easier because the hospital really dropped the ball. Only months before Kamaya's disappearance, they had been asked to increase their security measures and they were gonna fit these electrical bracelets on newborn babies so that if this happened, an alarm would go off. But of course, they never took this measure. On top of this, there was meant to be a picture taken of Kamaya when she was born. They were supposed to do this with all babies in case this happened so that they would know what to look for, but there was no picture on file. Now, unless this suspect somehow found this picture and took it with her, but I feel like it will probably be locked away somewhere safe. So I, it looks like they just didn't take this picture. And on top of all this, their surveillance cameras weren't even up to the standard that they're supposed to be at. So it was really difficult to get a clear image of this woman. Of course, Shannara had dealt with her a lot, but she had just given birth. I'm sure she was exhausted. I'm sure it was a lot more difficult to create an accurate image in your mind. And because the hospital dropped the ball on so many levels, it made this case 10 times harder to solve. And this wasn't even the first time a baby had illegally been taken from this maternity ward. Because only two years before, this other woman had stolen her own baby who she didn't have custody of due to her mistreatment of other children. And the day Kamaya went missing, this little girl was still missing too. So yeah, to say the hospital dropped the ball would truly be an understatement. And Shannara did sue the hospital for 250 grand and she did receive monetary settlement, but the details of this are not known. So for years, this case was open, but inactive because there were just no leads. And I did see one source that said the family weren't really cooperating to solve it, but I'm not really sure how true that is. But authorities did believe that Kamaya was taken by someone who wanted to raise a child. So they did believe that, 
even though she was taken, that she was being loved and cared for. And that is exactly what happened. However, as a newborn, Kamaya was susceptible to a lot of medical conditions. She'd been born with a hernia the size of her fist and if this ruptured, it would have been bad and this needed to be fixed within her first six months. She also was susceptible to anemia because Shannara had anemia. So even though they believed that she was probably being loved and cared for, they needed to get her back because they were not confident that she was safe or healthy. Right. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you already know this, but I did have issues with the audio for the second half of the video, so it's just going to be slightly lower quality audio for the rest of it. I apologize, I did my best. <laughs> okay, time for me to tell you about Gloria Williams. Gloria Williams was the woman that took Kamaya Mobley. She had been pregnant herself, but she miscarried quite late in her pregnancy and she was in an abusive relationship at the time and she kind of thought that by having a baby it would fix things and bring about some peace in the house which i mean no but anyway she had decided she was getting a baby so she just went on and pretended to be pregnant for her friends her family and then one day just came home with a baby which side note who how how do you get away with that how are you gonna go through labor all on your own and then not tell anyone that you've had a baby and just walk home with a baby well not walk home but like arrive home with a baby like how did that not raise alarm bells i i, I don't know <laughs> i think her family found it weird but they didn't like question it i guess but yeah all this in between stuff happened too so she lived in south carolina and one night just drove all the way down to jacksonville florida spent 14 hours pacing the halls in this maternity ward and then snatched shanara's baby kamaya and to her family this gloria said that she went into labor at work and it all happened pretty fast <laughs> and then she didn't have a chance to call anyone and so Gloria took Kamaya in and raised her as if she was her own baby. And she changed her name to Alexis Manigo. So I'm gonna call Kamaya Alexis for the time that she's with Gloria. And then later in the story, I'll go back to calling her Kamaya when the shit hits the fan. <laughs> so just remember that Kamaya and Alexis are the same person. When Alexis was about 18 months old, Gloria left her partner because remember she was in an abusive relationship and she just said, you know what, you're putting me and our baby in danger and I'm, I'm done. And then when Alexis is at the age of, you know, wanting to find a job and all this kind of stuff, things get a little difficult because to have a job, you need a social security card, you need a birth cert, all of these things Gloria didn't have for her. So she just wouldn't allow her to get a job. She didn't tell her why initially. Gloria then confessed to Alexis on their front steps. She was a teenager. She was like old enough to know what's going on. But to find out that your mother did this horrible, horrible thing and to find out that she's actually not your mother is another thing and that you actually have a totally different mother who you've never really met. And you're not even who you think you are because you're, you think your name is Alexis Manigo, but actually it's Kamaya Mobley. Like, oh, talk about an existential crisis. And it must feel like nothing you've ever known is true. And I can't even imagine. There's, there's probably things that you would be questioning that I haven't even thought of. But Alexis did agree to keep it a secret. But then two anonymous tips came in and led the police straight to Gloria Williams. And it was later found out that due to a court ordered DNA test, that Alexis Manigo was in fact Kamaya Mobley. And just something quite interesting about the science and the research of women who abduct babies, the main risk factors for these are number one, losing your own baby, particularly later on in the pregnancy, and number two, rocky romantic relationships. So Gloria Williams had suffered from both of these things. So not that it justifies it, but it made a lot of sense. Also, what is this? Why am I... I must be stressed talking about this. 
But of course, Gloria was arrested and charged with kidnapping. And I'm just gonna give you a little overview of the trial. So Gloria did plead guilty to these charges. She explained at the time her head was just in a different place. She was going through grief all on her own, which as we've seen like in last week's video with Patrick Quirk, going through grief and not talking about it can lead you to do some crazy things. Why am I like, I'm struggling to speak today. I mean, I'm but obviously also Gloria thought that this baby was gonna bring some peace into her home and her relationship. And she just couldn't come to terms with the fact that the baby was gone. Whether she was in her right mind or not, she decided that she was having a baby, whether it was her own or not, which is just bleh, wild to me. How can you even consider that? And there is this really emotional clip of Shannara calling out to Kamaya saying, I am your mother. They are hurting. When you, this, you, you reaching out to my child, that is my child. I am your mother, Kamaya. I am your mother. I'm trying to put my head into Kamaya's perspective and I just cannot even fathom what that must have been like. Like you'd be so confused because this woman who is essentially a stranger to you is telling you that they love you and that you're exactly like them and that they're your mother. Oh, it must have been such a weird, weird time for her. But eventually Gloria was sentenced to 18 years in prison, which was the amount of time that she kept Kamaya away from her family. And I think that's fair. I don't think she exactly deserved life in prison or anything. She didn't harm Kamaya in any way, but I mean, she did this awful, evil thing, but like she still acted out of love. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not trying to justify it, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think 18 years is fair personally, but let me know what you think about that. So now Kamaya is 21 years old, coming up to her 22nd birthday actually in a week or two, and she seems to be doing really well. She says that she's dealing with it better than people expect her to, which is amazing. Like she makes jokes about it. Like when people ask, how's your mom? She's like, oh, which one? <laughs> which I feel like that's something I would do if I was in that situation. Cause everybody always asks me how you handling this stuff. Cause I, everybody always asks me that like, to be honest, I dealt with it probably uh, better than what people think. But yeah, I definitely think that's pretty amazing. I mean, she seems to be such a strong girl, so fair play to her. And I'm sure it's not all roses and daisies, but you know, it seems overall pretty positive. She does go back and forth between South Carolina and Florida, but she does actually think that Florida will end up being her home. She answers to Alexis and Kamaya, which I, f I feel like would be quite trippy, <laughs> but you know what, it, it, if it works for her, great. Kamaya still has a pretty good relationship with Gloria because she is to her, her real mother because she's the one that brought her up. She's the one that raised her, that provided her with everything she needed in life, everything she wanted. She loves her still. Kamaya's relationship with Shannara is a little rocky. She actually described it to be a roller coaster. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I understand that because Shannara is now at this point where she thinks she can just claim Kamaya as her own. And I mean, Kamaya is an adult, she can decide what she wants to do now legally, but it's like Shannara wants to forget that those 18 years of Kamaya's life ever existed. And I mean, I can totally understand feeling that way, but I feel like in that situation, you really have to, for both people, you really have to see it from the other person's perspective. And it must be really difficult and I'm not saying, well, I'd do that better <laughs> because I, I don't know. Um, it seems really difficult and I'm, I don't envy them. Like, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is it really fair to just take on this role as Kamaya's mother when you're essentially a stranger to her and all she knows is Gloria who loved and cared for her all these years. Yes, Gloria did an awful thing on Shannara and Shannara just wants to forget that Gloria was ever even a thing, but yeah, it's just it's really difficult and I'm, I cannot imagine how much that would just mess you up and how that would really strain your relationship. But look, overall, Alexis or Kamaya is... <laughs> Sandy. You know, worse things have happened and I know it, as much as it is to process and as difficult as it is 
to maintain relationships and stuff she does have two families that love her and not a lot of people can say that so ultimately i guess you could say it's a happy ending because as child abductions go this is pretty much best case scenario Kamaya was not harmed in any way she was loved she was cared for for years and years and years and she was reunited with her family so there's closure she is safe and that is the main thing but that brings me to the end of this video thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy it please leave a like comment down below let me know what you thought you know there are probably a lot of opinions on this one about Gloria and you know how you're meant to how are you meant to continue on when this has happened in your life I, I'm not really sure so let me know what you think about it turn the notifications on so that you don't miss an upload of mine and like I said my Instagram and Twitter are katephilpot underscore yt and I take case suggestions in the case suggestion form in the description below so I think I've covered all bases there again thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye Thank you.